Data nerds, I built a data science project in under an hour with ChatGPT. Not only was it able to perform some in-depth analysis with SQL and Python to generate some pretty insightful visualizations, but it was also able to provide some deep insights into this analysis. It even covered some things I was previously unaware of. And I'm pretty blown away by this because I'm hearing all the time of people saying that ChatGPT can't do their job. So we're gonna be walking through my step-by-step -step process so that way you can do the same. Hey there, Luke here. And unfortunately, I'm here too early in the video. I'm not saying that ChatGPT is gonna take your job. I'm just saying that ChatGPT can be a good co-pilot to your job. All right, let's continue. Oh, and the project is listed below, along with my new course on how to use ChatGPT for data analytics, which this video isn't sponsored, but it is supported by those of you that have bought my course. So thanks to those that support the channel. All right, so let's get into the master plan of how we're gonna actually do this. The first part involves connecting ChatGPT to my data source, which is a BigQuery database. From there, we're gonna have it write the code to analyze the data. ChatGPT will then provide me with the insights that it finds, and I can reprompt it as necessary to guide it on where to go next. Now we can hear the keyboard warriors now, complain about how this is a security concern connecting ChatGPT to my database. And well, if you haven't heard the news, ChatGPT Enterprises solves this problem. It meets the same security requirements of these cloud providers, so should be good enough for you. Back to the project. After we've gone through and extracted all the insights, we need to move into showcasing the results. And as good as they look in a chat window, yeah. this really isn't the best way to share work. So one of the plugins that we're gonna be using with ChatGPT to perform all this analysis actually has the ability to export all these findings to GitHub and then have this beautiful project so the world can see our work where it captures all our different analysis and insights. So what is the problem we're gonna be solving with this project? Well, let me show you. I built this app, datanerd.tech, that tells you what are the top skills of data nerds. And it does this by looking at almost 2 million job postings that I'm pulling on a daily basis from around the world and then aggregates what the top skills are. And you can learn more about how I built this app in this video, but we're continuing on. So about that problem, I can look at a specific job title such as data analyst in the United States and it tells me what are the top skills. Here, we can see that it's SQL and Excel. Additionally, this app analyzes to find out what is the salary for a given skill. So we can see here, something like SQL, it's around 90,000, middle of the pack, whereas something like Excel is bottom of the pack. So I'm not gonna lie, like most people, I'm gonna want more paying money. So why wouldn't I go for something like Oracle here that's the highest paying skill? Well, when we go back to these skill rankings, we can see that Oracle is down here at the bottom at only around 8%, which in my opinion, it's pretty low odds that you're gonna get a job that's gonna pay that high. But if we look at something like Python and Tableau, which are the second and third highest paying, we can see with the popularity of these that our chances of getting it are much higher. So that's the problem I wanna solve with ChatGPT, helping to find out what is a skill that is not only popular, but also that pays well. And doing this for not only data analysts, but all data nerds. So spend three minutes in this damn video. We haven't still jumped into this problem. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is select the model. So we can use GPT for the core model, which has analysis or advanced data analysis built into it. And this is great if I have some sort of data set that's a file, such in this case here, where I have a free data set on job postings of data analysts in the United States. You can get it from Kaggle. This would be great for this. And I could download it and then upload it into ChatGPT. However, going back to datanerd.tech, we can see we have over 2 million jobs, which is like eight gigs of data. If I tried to upload this into ChatGPT, I'm gonna get in there. So instead, we're gonna be using a plugin, specifically this plugin right here, Notable. Let me show you what it does by starting this project. So I prompted ChatGPT to start a new notebook with Notable and provides me this link to it. And inside of it is, Nothing right now, because we gotta add to it. So I can just prompt it with this of make a fancy visualization in Python. And I'm seeing that it's using the Notable plugin and I can scroll over here and actually watch the work. It actually just generated this Python code inside of the notebook. And now it's running the cell on its own and we get this final visualization that's calling fancy bar chart. All right, cool. This is what it actually does. It runs and then has all your visualizations here. And then if we go back to ChatGPT, it actually exports the results into it. Now, the other great thing of Notable, besides actually just keeping all of our different Python code and visualizations in one place that we can go to, it's also that we can go in and add different data connections. Unlike advanced data analysis, this can connect to a host of different databases. In our case, this BigQuery database that I have all my job postings in, it can connect to. All I have to do is provide it this key data to access this database. And the last, last thing that I really enjoy using Notable for, all right, this is sounding like a damn sales pitch right now. 
I am in no way sponsored by Notable, nor do I have any affiliation with them. I just really enjoy their product that they've made to integrate with ChatGPT, and I'm trying to share with you. So just want to iterate that. All right, let's get back to it. And the last, last thing that I really enjoy using Notable for is being able to actually connect to a GitHub repository. When I go in to create a project, it has the ability to clone from a repository. And so I can go into GitHub, create a new repository, get this URL that this repository is in, and then provide this along with another user access token that I'm getting from GitHub to then go in and clone this repository. And now my new project inside of Notable is connected to my repository inside of GitHub. And we can see this by this readme has my new repository going into my new project into the readme. We can see it's also saying my new repository. So we've now connected Notable to our BigQuery database and also connected it to GitHub. All we need to do now is go back into ChatGPT and start analyzing data. So now that we have that project established, let's get through and have ChatGPT create a new notebook inside of this project and let's actually perform exploratory data analysis the first step that we need to take. So after I've gone through and connected to that data nerds job connection that we previously established, I then prompt ChatGPT to go in and perform descriptive statistics on the numerical columns of the data set. Basically, I wanna find out what's going on. So we end up with this, which shows us different insights into the mean, median, and the quartiles of the salary data, but I wanna visualize it. And we get this beautiful visualization showing the salary distributions for data analysts, data engineers, and data scientists. This is pretty good visually to show what is going on inside this data. And if we go into Notable to see what's going on behind the scenes to build this thing, we can scroll up here and see that first it did a SQL query in order to extract out the information for these three different roles. And then from there, it used some pretty hefty Python to actually go through and visualize those SQL results. So it's pretty awesome that you're able to do all of this with ChatGPT without having to write a single line of code yourself. But let's move on by looking at some of the other columns in this data set that are non-numerical. Here we have a breakdown of all the different major job titles within these job postings. We can see from this, we have a majority of those three that I previously showed in the histogram, of data analyst, engineer, and then scientist. And then senior roles and engineering roles are a little bit less frequent in this. Let's do something similar for all the skills now in these job postings. And we get this showing the top 10 skills along with their associated count in those job postings. As expected, SQL and Python are some of the highest. So doing a quick recap of what we've done for EDA so far, we've been able to go through and analyze not only that salary data, but also that job title data and all those skills. Now we need to move forward with actually solving this problem. All right, so we need a way to combine these three graphs. We'll talk about this one in a second. First skills, I'm not gonna lie, this one ain't too bad. It's great at showing an order and magnitude from high to low. Now this one, I haven't shown you yet. It shows for the 10 most requested skills, what are their median salaries. Engineering skills are at the top with analytical skills down at the bottom. So what do you need to do when you need to combine two bar charts? Well. You make it into a scatter plot. The so, x-axis down here is going over what is the salary, higher paying to the right. And then the y-axis is actually going into the job posting count. How many jobs actually have an associated skill to that paying salary? Diving into it, we can see we have these two outliers up at the top. As you can probably guess what they are. Yeah, Python and SQL. And with this, we can see not only the salary associated with it, but also the job posting count. Now it does have a purpose. Remember, we wanna get the most optimal skill. So we want something that's high paying and also that has a high amount of requests. And just realize I'm giving two thumbs up. So we wanna be up in this right-hand quadrant if we can. And we wanna stay away from this area down here. So things like Smartsheet, DigitalOcean, and Monday.com, sorry. We're not gonna make the list. We wanna be focusing on skills like SQL, Python, AWS, Spark, and even Scala. Now don't forget, we also wanna break this out for all the different data nerds. So I took this scatter plot a step further and actually broke it down by these different job titles. Now this one's showing data analysts, data scientists, and data engineers. Some insights from it are that data analysts are grouped down here at the bottom with lower paying jobs, unfortunately. Data engineers, which are in red, appear to have a lot more technical skills requested in it. And then the green for data scientists are sort of just a mix between data analysts and data engineers. Anyway, this is really great and all, but there's just one major problem. Most people don't know how to read a scatter plot. Specifically this one, how are people supposed to know intuitively how to interpret which skills are the most optimal? Well, here's what I'm thinking. Just by looking at these three different job tiles, we can see there's big disparities between pay and skill count. 
So the first thing we need to do is actually normalize these values. Normalize these values between zero and one. And so that way we have a standard metric across all the different job titles. So that way we can actually compare them for a most optimal comparison. All right, let's jump into ChatGPT to do this. All right, so that scatter plot that we built actually has a pretty good data frame behind it. If we look at here, this data frame has these columns of skills and then the job title itself. For each one of them, it has what their median salary is, and then also a salary count column or a count of the number of values. This whole portion right here is how we got that scatter plot. These two values are what we're gonna be normalizing. So I prompted ChatGPT with this. We need to come up with some sort of grading mechanism that takes into account a high rate of job postings for a skill and a high salary. Let's call this thing a skill multiplier and assign it to every value that needs to be normalized based on that job title column. Now ChatGPT got to work and actually it went through and it helped explain how it was gonna do this. First, it talked about that normalized value and what formula you'll be using for that. This is what's going to be setting a value between zero and one for both the skills and salary. Additionally, we came up with that skill multiplier, which is that normal skill count times that normalized median salary. And now we end up with this data frame that has the original columns that we had before, but also these three new columns on that skill multiplier and those normalized values. And anytime you do anything with ChatGPT, you should double check that it made sure it did it correctly. And going through it, I can see that it was. As an example, if we're sorting this salary from high to low, as I'd expect for data analyst, if I went and checked the normalized salary, it's gonna be a one value because that is the highest amount. Conversely, if I went to the lowest paying data analyst, so this one in this case of $50,000, I would expect to see zero. And I also did this for the count and then verification of the skill multiplier. Everything worked out. So I was able to get ChatGPT to graph all the different job titles that we have, and then rank it high to low and provide it in this bar graph. Now I wanna just focus on the top three roles in data science. And I can interpret it, but I'm gonna let ChatGPT do it. So I'm gonna upload this plot to ChatGPT and ask it to interpret it. It was able to go through and actually extract out a lot of insights from this graph. Now you may be like, Luke, why didn't you just prompt it in your last chat with Notable and actually ask it about the visualization more? And unfortunately, Whenever you have ChatGPT with plugins enabled currently, you can't actually use ChatGPT's capabilities to see images. So it came up with some pretty interesting insights that SQL is a crucial across all professions and Python is also essential, particularly for data scientists. The other thing it points out, the visualization tools like Tableau are important for analysts and scientists. And then finally it goes in big data technologies like Spark and Hadoop are more relevant for engineers and scientists. Now it also came with this final suggestion for data nerds. It says focus on Python and SQL regardless of the specific data role and then goes into each role and specifies what they should maybe hone on further to basically excel in their career and have the most efficient opportunities. So this is pretty great because I was going to summarize this graph for you and ChatGPT did it instead. But me demonstrating that had a purpose. I actually went through and provided ChatGPT with each of those graphs that we previously generated and then had it from there summarize it in a markdown format. And I did this for all the different graphs that we generated. Going back into Notable in our readme file, I then took all of those different markdown answers that I provided along with those visualizations and put them inside of here. So now this readme tells all the different work that we just did and basically overviews our entire project. And then because we synced our GitHub repository with our Notable project, I now have a full data science project that details everything that we did inside of GitHub to actually share with the world. And somebody can go in and potentially see for like our exploratory data analysis, they could go in and see all our different Python code behind actually generating these visualizations and running the code. Now one disclaimer that I highly recommend you put into this if you're using ChatGPT to generate anything, is putting a disclaimer that ChatGPT generated this, that you didn't do the code yourself. Now this project took me about an hour of work. And there's a lot of things that I went into in this project that I didn't show in this video to save some time. But if you're curious about learning more about how I actually built this project fully, then be sure to check out my course on ChatGPT for data analytics. This course bundles up all my best practices and saves me on average around 20 hours a week. Now I cover everything from custom instructions to prompting best practices. I even go into detail of how to build this project with step-by-step -step instructions. I've been working on this course for the past year, so I'm super excited to finally get a share it with you. 
All right, as always, if you got value out of the video, smash that like button. With that, I'll see you in the next one.